that uh, I like to think of franchising as being entrepreneurship, but within the structure of a business system. So you're not just going off into the wild blue yonder every day doing things differently. You know, um, there is a there is a there is a, a system that you're following based on uh, the, the, the fact that the business has been operating for a while, it's learned what works and what doesn't work. And so it's really entrepreneurship harnessed within a system of doing business. And just to give you some idea of the types of businesses that you'll find um, in this uh, wide range of businesses, you've got accounting and tax services, automotive products and services, business services, educational services, lawn and garden, janitorial, hair salons, real estate, restaurants. A lot of people think that Franchising is just quick service restaurants and hotels, but there are many, many types of franchise businesses um, that you'll find in almost every um, commercial sector or segment in the U.S. Franchisees. There are lots of advantages to a, a franchisee uh, versus going your own way in terms of starting a business. You get to affiliate with a brand name. You get to become part of a proven system of doing business. Um, you receive ongoing training and support. Um, when the franchisor is developing new products and services and new R&D, that's pumped back into your business. Um, you get access to product and equipment frequently through co-op purchasing programs that drive down the cost of your goods. Um, and then you get to be part of a network with other franchisees. And frequently that is one of the best parts of a franchise system because you have other people who are operating the business maybe in different locations around the country doing it the same way that you're doing and they're sharing their things that they learn and their expertise back into the system and then the franchisor if they're a good franchisor harvests all that knowledge from its existing operators and and plows that back into the system so in, uh, just a couple of caveats franchising is not a guarantee of success like any business there are risks associated with the business uh, it is not for everyone uh, if you're one of these uh, kind of guys that likes to kind of go off and do your thing and do it your way every day uh, and dream up new ways of doing things, then franchising may not be uh, the right kind of business for you because it's a very regimented system of doing business. The franchisor wants you to follow their operating system. Uh, and then lastly, it's not a short-term commitment. Uh, most franchise agreements uh, have an, uh, an, an average uh, annual term of between seven to ten years, and in most cases, the franchisor and you will want to renew that agreement after the first uh, after the first term. First, establish your short-term goals, your long-term financial goals. You know, have a business plan around yourself. You know what you want to accomplish. Then think about your lifestyle. You know, will you and your spouse commit the time and effort to owning and operating the business? You know, if you're the kind of guy like me, who uh, likes to work a regular work day, you know, and go home and kick back and not have to worry about too much, franchising is not for you. Because when you own that franchise business, you're on that business 24-7. If something goes wrong, and you know, Mariana can tell you about this, if your employee doesn't show up for work that day, guess what? You're going to be there covering that shift. Uh, if the lights go out, if there's, if there's a flood, uh, whatever happens to that business, it's yours. Uh, it's like a child. You have to take care of it. You have to, you have to be there. Uh, so lots of times that's a big commitment, um, both in terms of time and, and energy and, and, and all of it. Um, at, I guess thirdly, your, your own financial situation. You know, how much money are you able to invest in the business without putting your, yourself at, uh, at some level of financial risk? Um, and then lastly, as I had mentioned before, your personality and your attitude. Um, but basically, it's designed to give you, the prospective investor, all the information that you need to know about that franchise business before you sign the franchise agreement. And it actually includes a copy of the franchise agreement that you will sign. So it's very important to read that document before you sign it. Uh, it will give you information about the experience of franchise management, any bankruptcy and litigation history, um, what the initial ongoing fees may be in the business, uh, any territory rights, if there are any, uh, in the franchise deal. Uh, a contact list of current and former franchisees, which again, I say it's very important you contact those folks. And then the franchise agreement itself. Uh, there is a wide range of franchises available to fit just about every pocketbook. Um, about 70% of franchisors have an initial fee that's under $30,000. Um, 75% 75, 75 of the franchise companies that are members of IFA, their total investment cost is less than $250,000. So lots of times people think, oh, you know, in order to get a franchise, I've got to have, you know, several hundred thousand dollars. But many of them are uh, priced under 
250,000, uh, nearly 40, 45 percent are under 100,000, and there are also some very low-cost franchises out there. Uh, typically, the range of royalty payments uh, ranges in the 3 to 6 percent on gross sales, but there are other fees that you may also have to pay as a franchisee for co-op advertising technology and other things. And all of those fees, by the way, are, um, are outlined in detail in the uh, franchise disclosure document so that you know what you're getting into before you get into it. Uh, financing uh, certainly has become more of a challenge for all businesses right now, and that's also true for franchise businesses. The uh, Small Business Administration uh, has a program called the 7A uh, Guaranteed Loan Program that uh, was really designed to help uh, um, uh, entrepreneurs and others who are seeking business loans uh, uh, acquire loans through a, a loan guarantee process. Um, there are many franchise companies that participate in this program, and there is a uh, there's a, a category of those businesses that have been pre-approved for a fast-track loan approval process uh, by the SBA, and those businesses are on the website here at FranchiseRegistry.com. Sometimes um, understanding um, how franchising works uh, can best be uh, understood through examples. Another, uh, so another story that I just want to share with you, uh, Phil Wilkins. Uh, is the owner of uh, four McDonald's restaurants. Um, he uh, was a young kid in Cincinnati. He was about 25 years old at the time. He had gotten out of college, worked, was going to get his master's degree. Um, he got downsized, was fired by the insurance company he was working for at the time. And uh, he saw this article in uh, Money Magazine that uh, was about McDonald's. It was about a, a, a guy who had also been fired and been downsized and had uh, gotten a McDonald's restaurant and then became a, a very big success. And so Phil, the light bulb went off and Phil said, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to become a McDonald's franchisee. So he rode off to McDonald's and said, uh, well, I'm, I'm ready to be a franchisee at McDonald's. And he was quickly, flatly denied. So um, he had about $20,000 that he had saved at the time. And uh, the guys at McDonald's said, well, you look like a good guy and you, you know, working hard and got the right idea, but you just don't have enough money. So he went back and he learned a lesson through that whole process. So he and his wife, they erased all of their personal debt. They downsized their lifestyle. Uh, they skimped and saved and they started saving money. He was working night jobs, doing two jobs. She was working two jobs. They were trying to put together a nest egg. So he went back to McDonald's a year later. He applied again and he was denied again. So another year goes by, and he then meets a McDonald's uh, area manager guy, and he says, I'll work in your restaurant on weekends for nothing to learn the business. So he did that for a year. Then he went back to McDonald's the fourth time with his experience of working in the restaurant and with the money that they had saved over a four-year period, and he was accepted. So the, the moral of the story is that if you have a, um, a dream, if you have the will, there is the way. But it's not going to be handed to you. It's something you're going to have to work for. And in some cases, for businesses, to invest in a business and to go through the financial qualification process, you're going to have to get your own financial house in order. So that's one thing franchisors look at very closely is when the person walks through the door, they want to look at their financial qualification. They want to look at their work experience. But if you go and work in a franchise business for a couple years and then you apply for that franchise, you're much more likely to increase your chances of getting it, as Phil did. Uh, lastly, I would uh, highly encourage you to visit our website where you can get a, a lot of resources and a lot of information about franchising and just quickly um, mention some of the things that you might want to take a look at on our website. Uh, we have profiled about 1,200 franchise company members and you can find information there about their total investment costs, the number of franchises, their years in business, <coughs> lots of good information about our members. Uh, you can find a whole range of resources, attorneys, consultants, brokers, and other people who are specialists in the franchising industry. Uh, you can find our research information on the website. And then lastly, if you want to jot this down, we have a three times a week uh, e-newsletter that covers the franchising industry from uh, head to foot. And uh, that's the link on our website where you can uh, subscribe to the uh, e-newsletter. It's free. And just again, I'll give you my, uh, my telephone number. It's uh, 202. 662-0764. I'd be happy to talk with you about anything as long as it relates to franchising. And uh, my email is jreynolds at uh, franchise.org. And I want to thank you very much for inviting me here to speak this morning.